Okay, so in this session specifically, we will talk about how you can build your own custom engine agents. In that case, we're actually talking about custom models, custom orchestrator, custom UX, and bringing all that together and um, basically designing the, everything the way you want. I'll be quick on the slides and I'll try to show as much as possible in the code side. So uh, just a quick summary, what we have in the Copilot extensions. Obviously, we have connectors, plugins, and the last one is your custom scenario. And today, we will specifically focus on the custom scenario, where we bring our own knowledge, um, our own app, own workflows, or automation, AI model, and orchestrator. And this is not a a strange uh, a scenario for us if you've been around for Teams app development, you already know that we've been using bot framework and we've been using Teams as an interface. What has changed here is actually we now bring large language, large language models and small language models in our bots. And we are able to use Teams AI library to bring more sophistication into the table, like you being able to use your own orchestrator, being able to use any model you want or uh, being able to bring any kind of data setup from the cloud, like Azure or any setup you prefer, actually. And this setup we can build in any language, like .NET, JS, and Python. Teams AI library is available in all those languages. And on top of everything, we can actually uh, design our, our own uh, sophisticated conversation experience using actions, uh, triggers, and intent detection. If you've been using cognitive services, maybe you're aware of the intent detection, but with the new, te new tech and LLM, this is a lot easier than it used to be with cognitive services. On top of all of this, Teams AI library also brings us a bunch of UX goodies like citation, feedback looping, and streaming is also coming on the way. Uh, I'll show you how you can include all of these and actually build your own custom engine agent experience um, on top of Microsoft 365. So let's quickly have a look what has changed in the past from now. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if you're aware of bots uh, earlier in the past like couple of years, we've been building bots, but they were um, basically responding to a couple of comments we defined in the code, not understanding the skills as much as we want them to. And we used to define intents specifically, and we used to define the same intents in the um, code as well. And uh, that was quite hard coded in the past. And today with Teams AI library, we are able to um, actually evolve the conversation and we don't have to de define every single answer bot is supposed to give to the end user. And that's why now we don't call them bots, we call them custom agent agents, more like an agentic experience. And uh, in this case, apps can register skills and it can learn skills and being able to answer questions with the power of natural language processing. So if we look a little deeper, uh, what is the conversational experience or how it looks like? Uh, we basically use Microsoft 365 interface, um, but we bring our own AI models in the interface. So with Teams AI library, uh, there are actually four main things we are utilizing. First, we are uh, smoothly connected to Microsoft 365 interface. Second, we are actually using prompt engineering and moderation, and we don't have to actually add, let's say, multiple SDKs to be able to do that. We just um, use one single SDK and we're good to go. And the third one is the intent detection and mapping actions. And I'll show that, uh, that in the code, how it actually works, which will make a lot more sense showing that in the code. And finally, LLM modularity, which is quite important these days. Um, everyone looks for a different experience and each model uh, you try your app will act differently. Each setup you build uh, in your model will also act differently. So um, in that case, that gives you a lot of customization space if you're looking for that sort of an experience. Okay, so there are four simple steps to get started building your own custom engine agent with Teams AI library. Obviously, we start with Teams toolkit and I've shown 
how you can do this in our very first session of this series uh, two weeks ago. Um, so we started Teams Toolkit where we have templates already uh, help help you get started with Teams AI Library SDK. Um, and with Teams AI Library, these four steps we follow. The first one is create AI components. And then second, we go ahead and create the application object. Um, and it's different than the application itself. I'll show you what it means. And the third one is adding the prompt, which defines the behavior and characteristic of your custom engine agent. And the fourth one is add actions. And before I actually dive into the code, I want to remind all of you how Career Genie looks like, what are the capabilities of Career Genie, a brief intro about our famous custom engine agent. Career Genie is actually a custom engine agent, works on Teams, and uh, Career Genie is uh, specialized in HR queries, and it helps us finding the right candidates uh, for our HR team. And it can do a lot more than just finding the right candidate. It can also uh, utilize some actions like creating lists and also maybe finalizing the list and sending lists to HR for scheduling interviews, etc. So it is a really sophisticated custom engine uh, uh, agent. And I want to show a quick video of Career Genie, and then I will jump right into the code, how Career Genie actually works. Okay, so let me play this and show you. So in Career Genie, it looks like a um, casual bot. We, if you see, we actually have some sort of UI components here, like AI label, confidentiality label, and then we also have feedback loop. So all of these UI goodies are actually coming from Teams AI library. The second, the features I mentioned earlier, I can ask uh, really complex questions like, can you suggest me .NET developers who can speak Spanish? Um, and Career Genie can bring me the good candidates from Azure AI Search. It's already connected to Azure AI Search behind the scene, and we can view the CVs. And after that, I want to show you one good feature of Career Genie, which is authentication. All bots require, all sophisticated bots require authentication, and Career Genie has that. And uh, the last thing is the actions I want to highlight. For example, when we like one of the candidates, if we want to create a list, we can say add Isaac in the .NET developer candidates list. And we can also say add Anthony in the same list with Isaac. That means that a large language processing is actually helping us here to uh, handle much more complex queries than just a static list creation, et cetera. So um, we can create multiple lists, we can delete lists, we can ask Career Genie to swap candidates from one list to another, and uh, we can keep asking, summarize my list, etc. And keep in mind that by just changing the prompt, behavior will also adapt uh, and uh, reply to uh, basically your queries. After our list is final, we can just ask to summarize and finally say, send my list to HR. And then if we quickly go to Outlook, we should be able to see our email uh, sent to HR asking for scheduling interviews. So this is what Career Genie basically looks like. And I want to jump right in how you can build this experience. And I will also show you the labs you can consume to build this step by step from scratch. So let me actually find my mouse first. Okay. Um, I wanted to start this uh, conversation from Azure AI Studio because I thought, okay, where everything starts, it's actually Azure OpenAI. Um, we create Azure OpenAI and Azure AI search from Azure. So it is like creating any service on Azure. And the only thing I do on top of that is a creating a de deployment model, basically model I want to use in my app. So um, in this case, I want to show you one of the models I created here, which is GPT-4, it can be anything. And this is a great place to get started understanding how models actually work. Because AI Studio provides us a chat playground where we can customize the prompt and then we can also add our data. And here is the place you can actually upload files and select your blob storage, AI search, and then you'll be able to drag and drop all the files you want to uh, use in AI search and you should be good to go. Um, and after that, 
uh, once you connect your data source here, you can basically ask your questions and see if you're able to get good answers to your questions by just changing the parameters over here. Like, for example, changing changing temperature from zero to one, you will see that the answers will be uh, becoming more deterministic or more creative or repetitive, etc. You can basically customize everything from here. Let's say that you're done uh, customizing your model and you're good to go with your prompt and you're satisfied. The next step for us is starting from um, basically Teams Toolkit. Okay, I'll come to this later. As I mentioned earlier, I spent uh, uh, some time two weeks ago showing how you can build a custom engine agent from scratch using Teams Toolkit. So if you're interested in starting from scratch, you can check out that video in the community YouTube channel as well. So I'm going to skip that part for, uh, for today and I'll dive a little deeper in the code. Um, so here, this is the source code of Career Genie, and I want to basically step by step explain you how I built this app and how you can actually build as well. Um, so if you start from scratch in Teams Toolkit, you will basically have the same setup as I do over here, nothing more uh, I've added. And the main um, application will be in app.ts. And there are, uh, as I mentioned in the last slide, there are four main components. Uh, and the first one is AI components. And um, I should just start the, with AI components here. So. The first thing in the AI components is the model where we are utilizing OpenAI model. You can use exactly the same OpenAI model you used in AI Studio. You just need the key deployment name and endpoint over here and which you can add in the environment variables over here. And you should be good to go consuming that. Um, once you define your model, the next important AI component is prompts and prompt manager help us build the prompts and utilize the prompt with our AI system. And our prompts actually stay in prompts folder, which I'll go in a second. And uh, the third important thing here is the action planner. Action planner actually helps us create plans for uh, our AI decision making. And here, as you see, we use both model prompt uh, here inside the planner. And finally, I'll skip this bit and I'll talk about it in a second. And finally, um, after adding the storage of your choice, you will create the app, the app we mentioned in the last slide, which is the app actually you build using Teams AI library, it utilizes all of the planner, model, prompt, everything from Teams AI library, and that makes the decision uh, based on the AI component it has inside. Okay, so let's go to the prompts folder quickly and check out how our prompt looks like. First of all, I want to mention that we have config.json. This is pretty much the same thing we have in Azure AI Studio where I said you can um, change the temperature, change the settings and see how the behavior uh, changes in your uh, model experience. It is exactly the same parameters here. You can change these and see how the experience differs. The second thing I want to show here is the escape prompt txt. This is the place where we add our prompt and define the behavior of our uh, custom engine agents, which is career genie. And after adding the prompt, when you F5, you will see the first experience and basically you will get a behavior of um, friendly, professional uh, agent, which is expert in finding the right candidates, etc. But where does the data come from? I want to specifically show you where I defined the data, which is inside config.json. And here, we, under the data sources, we define Azure search, and this is the place where we define endpoint, index name, and the endpoint is your Azure AI search endpoint. And after that, you just need the deployment name for the embedding service and uh, basically key for your Azure AI search. These are also stored in ENV uh, environment variables, and we are actually passing them in the code. We don't want to keep them in the config.json. After you set up your prompt and then your data, uh, the third step is basically defining the uh, user experience, changing the user, user experience a little bit. And I showed in the video that um, we have really uh, easy to add, but also good looking user experience. 
coming from Teams AI library. The first one I want to highlight is the feedback loop where you can actually capture the feedback like thumbs up, thumbs down, and some comments from the user experience, uh, from the user themselves actually. And the second one I want to highlight is, maybe I didn't mention in the video, but uh, we are actually passing adaptive card as a response of the uh, career genie. Uh, you can pretty much use just text and just use simple citation coming from Teams AI library. But if you want to change the experience a little bit, you can just use predicted say comment. And inside this, you will be able to customize any sort of answer you want to send to uh, your users. Here, I'm using an adaptive card. And inside predicted say comment, I'm also defining the entities, activity entities, where I have the AI label, AI generated content. And also I have the um, confidentiality tag where uh, when let's say I share a resume of a person, I want to see this tag on top saying it's a sensitive information, don't share outside of your organization, etc. Okay, so this is the user experience bit. And finally, uh, sorry, it is last from the final uh, important bit is the authentication. This piece is actually coming from my uh, talented colleague, Rabia. She built the authentication bit of this app. Um, but in the authentication, Teams AI library also has a really unique uh, capability. We just use app that authentication to be able to create a single sign-on in our app. And after that, we'll be able to utilize graph in our app and we can utilize all of the data coming from the graph as well. Finally, the last but not least, the most important bit of Career Genie is the actions. I want to quickly show you how we initially define actions. Uh, but before that, uh, as you know, the behavior we have with data versus behavior we want to add uh, for creating lists is sort of different. For those different actions, we can actually create multiple prompts in our experience. And this is what I did here in Career Genie. That's why I have this choose prompt uh, function where I define both monologue and chat uh, prompt. So in chat prompt, we have the basic prompt and we have the data connection. And in the monologue prompt, I have all the setup related to creating list, adding uh, candidates in the list, and so on and so forth, all of, all of the action related stuff. So if I extend the monologue prompt, you'll see that we have contact.json, sk prompt txt, but we also have actions.js. Here, if you check a little bit, you'll see that we have create list, delete list, all of the things I mentioned earlier. And the same thing we define inside our app.ts as well, where at the bottom, you will actually see that all of these functions are defined inside ai.action. Um, and finally, in all of these, we also have actions.ts, which uh, each of the action has its own uh, function available here. This is pretty much it in the code, but I want to quickly go ahead and show you where you can find more to uh, basically get started building your own custom engine agent, which is aka.ms slash copilot dev camp.